How's it going, everybody? Andrew Zarian here, Wrestling Observer Live. We're here every day, Monday through Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. on Saturdays with Jim Valley, and Sundays with me. Hey, everybody. I'm kind of losing my voice today. It's been a rough Sunday for me. Big party day at the uh, Zarian compound here. Busy day here, but a lot of professional wrestling to talk about this week. You know, end of the year. Sometimes there's not a lot going on in the world of pro wrestling. Other times there's a lot of stuff happening. Right now, this is a very different year. We have renewals. We have new networks getting wrestling. Uh, SmackDown's future, NXT's future, Raw's future up in the air. We don't know where they're ending up. There were some reports that FX may be getting them. Also, AEW, what, what happens with them with their pay-per-view schedule and WBD and Max and all this. But today, we're going to talk about Collision last night. I want to get your thoughts on this. Just a couple of good things on the show. It was a fine show. Just nothing really, uh, you know, the Andrade match was fine. But, you know, the, the Hangman promo was great. And then it was just a show. I thought I, I enjoyed it. Listen, I'm not complaining, but it was just a show. AW also announced a new tournament. I know a lot of you guys love this. We're going to talk about that. SmackDown was full of heel turns. Very interesting. They're putting the pieces in. This is the beginning of their Wrestle, uh, their WrestleMania, you know, precursor of WrestleMania with Royal Rumble. But things are happening there. And also, NXT has a new TV deal headed to the CW. What does this mean for Billy Corgan and the NWA? A lot changed in the last two weeks here with this. I had Billy on Matt Men, and we spoke about, you know, him getting a new deal. But we're going to talk about this and a whole lot more when we come back from break. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live Sunday edition here. Man, it's, it was chilly today. Here in New York. Falls here. Next thing you know, Thanksgiving. In two weeks. Then you're in Christmas. Then you're in New Year's. Then here comes Rumble. The next thing we know, we're in March, April, WrestleMania. Next, we're back to where we were. It goes like this. There's no more like long years. Everything is so fast. Boom, you're done. Welcome to 2030. Man, what is wrestling going to look like in 2030? I don't even want to think about that. There's too much to speculate about today. CW is getting back into wrestling. I think you guys forgot. What was it? Saturday Morning Slam, right? A couple years ago, we had this. They tried it. It was a kid-friendly show. No headshots. Everything was more move-based. But CW is getting back into wrestling. WWE announced that NXT has signed a deal with the CW. The deal starts in October of 2024, so we got a year to go. It's a five-year deal. Man, leading them to October of 2029. Per Ari Emanuel, he said the deal is a 70% increase in average annual revenue over the previous deal. They didn't announce a specific number. There's been some speculation that that number now is around 20 to 25 million. I saw floating around. I have not been able to confirm it. I reached out to a couple people uh, at WWE, but I think with UFC happening, people were very preoccupied with that the last couple of days. So I'll try again. But I mean, this is great for them. You know, recently the CW started the transition to becoming more sports-based product. For years, the CW was more preteen and teen content. Even before that, one of my favorites on the CW and WB, do you know what that is, Matt, our producer? Ask me that one more time. Well, do you know what my favorite CW shows were? Oh, um, One Tree Hill, I think you said. Love One Tree Hill. Okay, Dan mm -hmm. Scott, not not a heel in that show. <laughs> Love Veronica Mars. Uh, Gossip Girl I watched. And my all-time favorite. You know what my all-time favorite is? Uh, on top, tip my tongue. Come on, you know it. Mm. Wasn't... Oh. Gilmore Girls. Come on, Matt. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm so sorry. Listen, I, I watch... For some reason, I was thinking Charm. content. I get it. It's fine. It's good shows. Good shows are good shows. But the CW, uh, they're, they're transitioning more into sports-based content because they're realizing the importance of this when it comes to ad revenue. They're currently airing mm -hmm. ACC Network inside, and inside the NFL, so this is interesting. They, they've started this. Next star is the parent company, 
But but WBD and Paramount own about 12% of the company. Very interesting. This is this is turning into something else here. Uh, with network affiliates over the air coverage, it's in, in in all of the top 100s right now. Net, Nielsen rated networks. They also have a free app. This is over the air. 98% of homes have access to this. Um, this potentially could give them a larger viewership pool than than USA. Right now, they're doing great business. They're doing around the 700s, which is beyond what USA had wanted. I think the number was 600 when I spoke to someone at USA. I mean, this is like almost a year ago now. And... People were getting concerned, you know, the internet, the, the the talking heads were concerned about those NXT numbers at one point, but I was always told that 600,000 and above is great for that show. Now, you know, that bar is much higher and WWE has figured out that every now and then when you bring a person like Becky Lynch down there, it it changes the dynamic of the product. And they're they attempting to skew younger with this. So I think the CW is a good position for them. Uh, I'm curious what this does to the ratings. Is this a million, million plus viewed show weekly? I don't know. I don't know. You know, it's not like they're on NBC or CBS or Fox. You know, then I would say, yeah, guaranteed. If you're not pulling a million viewers, then you're, you know, dead in the wind there. But I, this is going to be a good move for them. This is a positive. I will say it, uh, yes. one thing. One thing yeah. real quick. I will say that... Uh, when I tweeted this out um, on our Matt Men channel or our Matt Men account, they um, a lot of people didn't think that they had this channel. They're like, I don't even know where to find that. And they just said, I'm not watching it. They're already given up. And then, that's why I did a little research there to find out that, yeah, this channel's been around yeah. for a long time and it's at the top of your uh, TV listings normally, but no one really watches it because there was nothing yeah. good on. You know, so this is, um, this is an interesting move for them. But I will say, you know, a lot. Of, so the other part to this whole thing is that 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 spot uh, that they did on the NWA pay per view saw win. This was supposed to be a big show for them. This was supposed to be, you know, a, a precursor to going over to whatever network they were going to. The speculation was that it was a CW. Everybody was reporting that, and now it's in danger because they did a. Uh, a drug spot with uh you know didn't look good it picked up some negativity online and you know you're an over the air network <laughs> you're not on you're not on on cable to even justify that to any level listen when i watched it i i, I was like eh, whatever they, they tried something it didn't come off great you know, but if you're in a TV moment, you know, you're in a TV deal moment for that company, which they are. Not not the best move. House of Wrestling reported CW executives approached Tony Khan in June of 2022 about bringing Ring of Honor wrestling content to the network. Very interesting. Now, I, I don't know. I, I never heard this. Khan did not want to pursue the talks because... He didn't want to seriously entertain discussions about Ring of Honor deal until AEW television rights were up. This is regarding Ring of Honor. They wanted to get Ring of Honor on there. All right. I mean, I, I don't know if that's a bad move for them. I mean, if they had an option to go on CW, which Warner does have a piece of, why wouldn't you take it? I, I mean, I'd love to know more about this story. Unless there was no money, you know, it wasn't a money conversation. It was an ad split conversation at that point. I don't know. But NXT, far more valuable than Ring of Honor. Uh, they'll do, you know, they'll have the WWE machine behind them. And that, that, has, that gives you a little bit more negotiation power with any network if you're, you know, them right now. So interesting stuff here. CW getting NXT October 2024. Vince McMahon is apparently selling off nearly 30% of his TKO stock. The stock sale will pay out roughly between $700 and $800 million. Fascinating. Interesting. I wonder why. You know, listen, man, he's 80 years old, right? We all saw the pictures. We all saw the video from last week. He's 
moving like an 80 year old man. I, I think a lot of people have this image of Vince McMahon from the Attitude Era and from the 2000s, this lunatic, you know, uh, 50 something, 60 year old man. He's not that guy. And he had life changing back surgery. You know, the day to day when you, you know, when you are, when you are on top of your own company, things that you do are tolerated more. When you work for another company, which he does now, technically, he doesn't own WWE anymore. A lot of the things that people would tolerate are now exposed. You know, and better to cash out and leave before you become, you know, exactly what the internet has said you are <laughs> at your job. So I think this is part of his phase out process. This is him leaving. Uh, maybe he'll do something else. I don't know. But in the latest SEC filings for the company, it stated that members on the board uh, could have adverse financial and operational impact on our business regarding McMahon being a member on the board. So maybe this is part of the push out. You know, man, why the real did he question sell it is, then? will he yeah. sell off the mustache? No, that mustache <laughs> is there to stay, but it was, it was not as, it was not as like, you know, Vincent prices price ish as it was. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Very interesting. A lot of changes happening here. Ton of changes. And then now the, the story of raw is also peaking. There's also that. What happens on Monday Night Raw? Dave Meltzer po suggested that one of the contenders is FX. That would make sense to some level. But we're going to go to a quick break. When we come back, a whole lot more to talk about. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live on Sports Byline. Hey, do me a favor. Follow me on Twitter, at Andrew Zarian. I break some stuff. Some news, some scoops every now and then. Sometimes I just post Billy Joel references. You never know what you're getting with me. Let's talk about last night's collision. I had fun. My uh, my brother's visiting from Texas. We had a bunch of people over. We we're all watching this. It's funny. I put it on, and uh, my my middle brother. You know, he we grew up same household, same wrestling. You know, he he watches it every now and then. Not as familiar with. AEW as he as he is with WWE because he just never really heavily got into it and he's like wait a minute is that Andrade is that Lana is that Edge is that Sting I was like yep is that Christian I go yep <laughs> so I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing that's what that's what shined for him let's talk about the show Andrade with CJ Perry defeated Daniel Garcia I thought this was a good opener, really good opener. What did you think? Oh, sad. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, sorry, I did. I like this. Um, the the whole spot where Daniel Garcia just dances everywhere, and he was dancing on CJ, and they 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 were highlighting that she's uh, helping Andrade. So, and then of course Mir Miro was watching backstage. So. I think that's an, a big program, right? Yeah. I mean, I like that. I like that program. You know, Andrade mm -hmm. and, and Rusev, Rusev, Miro, uh, working together. I mean, we've seen it. It's happened. And these two are great. They're really good wrestlers. They, they're they going to tell a story. And I'm glad that to see. I want to see Andrade in a in a bigger position. I hope this is his his little bit of his that. rise to the top. Yeah. You know, I you he is a fantastic talent uh he has it you know some people say that there's reasons why he doesn't get pushed the way he should but he has it and if if you can manage it then great he should be in a top position i thought this was a solid open and i think it, it helps daniel garcia now he's had two great matches back to back great tv matches back to back nick wayne with christian and luchasaurus defeated dalton castle and the boys this was exactly what you thought it would be. Uh, I thought Dalton looked great. He's another one. And, you know, Nick's putting on some size. Have you seen that? His muscles, he's getting, his arms look good. His chest is getting bigger. He's developing. He's gonna, this kid he's is gonna 18. Bigger, yeah. This kid is 18 years old. What? 
think of what uh, Will Ospreay looked like. I think eventually Same that's going to be yeah. final the final form of Nick Wayne eventually. It's funny. I, I draw that comparison in my head every time. And they, they wrestle very different styles, you know, not not similar in style at all. But uh, just always when you see a young, talented kid, and I'm saying kid, not in a bad way, right? I, I, it's so impressive to me. Well, he is 18, 19, right? He's 18. Like 19. You just turned 18 in July. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I hope he has just what a, 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 a once in a lifetime career. You know, like, I want to see someone like him do so well in wrestling. As long as he keeps his, keeps his head on straight, and he doesn't get hurt, and he doesn't get crazy like everybody else gets in wrestling, he'll do great. He'll do fantastic. Let's talk about this. Jarlistico and Roosh against Pre Preston Vance. Oh, with Preston Vance, I'm sorry, and the assistant. The assistant. Jose, the assistant. <laughs> defeated the work horseman Anthony H Henry and JD Drake. Uh this was a showing for Roosh, you know, in Jarlistico. He's another one, man. Such a great talent. I want to see him and Andrade. Why aren't they doing something? Isn't that a match everybody wants to see? So after the match, House of Black cut a promo, and they're so good in that spooky role. Oh, yes. They, they really, I mean. It's interesting because Malachi is never wrestling, right? Like, when is the last singles match he had? Uh, it's been a minute, but now it's been just a minute. A, uh, like, it's not often. Faction. Yeah, it's not often. But they, but they did challenge uh, for the tag titles, um, and that, and it looks like it's gonna be the Kings of Black's throne. So it's gonna be him and uh, Brody King, and then in the same promo, um, Julia Hart got hers in, and then they just faded to black, and that was my favorite part. Where they just kind of walk back and they and the the smoke yeah. is there, and it's such good presentation of those guys. Yeah, I, I I think it's very good presentation of those guys, and it's one of those it's it's you know like the spooky gimmicks don't work, but they're not like spooky. They're just like into the occult, a little macabre, right? They're macabre. Mm -hmm. Loved it's it. Not I, too I think over the top. No, not over the top at you all. At least Chris Statlander <laughs> and Willow. They had a uh, they had a segment in the back, uh, and then Willow came out afterwards. Actually, I'm skipping over Roderick Strong. Sorry, uh, Roderick Strong defeated Darius Martin. He came out with the Kingdom. I I thought him coming out with you know just trying to get up from his chair, just trying to get up from his chair, and and then he couldn't, and then he did, and he got in the ring. Uh, you know, dude, the guy's he's been doing this for so long. At least there's some personality. He's not some guy that just goes in the ring anymore. You know, he's building his personality uh, on TV, which is good to see. TBS title qualifying match. Julia Hart with Brody King defeated Willow. It's okay. It's it fine. What, it was what it, it was. It was what it was, really. you know. Yeah. And Powerhouse I think, Hobbs. I think, I think real yeah, quick, I think we're getting Julia Hart uh, getting that title. So, but The TBS title, me. yeah. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. I mean, it makes sense. And then, you know, you have you have a bunch of, of programs she could be in. New programs, after that. yes. Yeah. Definitely. Mm -hmm. You know, she's totally improved. If you're if you're gonna talk about like most improved out of uh, from the yep. women's division, I, I would definitely put her there for the year. She's she's that moon totally salt is phenomenal. Yeah, 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 yeah. Very, great. Mm -hmm. Listen, that's what that it, they need more time, you know, they need more matches, they need more TV time, you know, you, you craft your art like that sometimes. Yeah, well, she, she benefited from uh, Elevation and Dark. She de she definitely yeah. did, because she got matches almost every week on those yeah. shows. Mm. Powerhouse Hobbs defeated Titus Alexander. This was a, I guess, a display for Hobbs. He's impressive, too. And the main event, Adam Copeland, Darby Allen, Sting, defeated Lance Archer and The Righteous with Jake Roberts. First of all, I like Lance Archer's entrance, okay? He just comes in there, and they just start beating up random people as he's coming down. And then he's, like, half smiling while he's doing it. I, I always get a kick out of it. Um, you know, this was just... It was fine. I liked it. It was okay. But it is showing an interesting split in this roster, right? 
This was not a top star heavy, you know, card. Obviously, you had you had Edge, you had Adam Copeland there, you had Sting there in a main event, and you had Andrade open it. But in between that, they told the story of new people, Jarlisigo and Roosh, new new to new to the television show, right? Not new to wrestling. Uh, Jarlisigo and Roosh. You had Nick Wayne. You had uh, Roderick Strong. You had Hobbs. It wasn't the same old. Oh, by the way, and also we should talk about this. You, you didn't. You, you left a key thing out of the show on the notes. Oh, Hangman Page's promo. Oh yes, my bad. You know, for for <laughs> all for all that is said about stories lacking in AEW, this is a. I'm enjoying this. This is a different type of feud they're building. They're they're building a proper feud here, and I'm liking it. They're taking their time here. This is going to be a great match, but I'm looking that, that promo really was, forward to it. Terrifying, uh, how he he basically told he basically told Swerve he was going to kill him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Did you see? I, I'm not even going to. We got a couple minutes here in the segment, but I got. I don't get a lot of dumb. I mean, I do. I get a. I, I shouldn't say that actually. I don't get a lot of dumb questions when it comes to wrestling. Right, sent to me in DMs. Occasionally, I get bombarded with just ridiculousness. I'm not going to say, because I find it so beyond inappropriate. There are people that are assuming or suggesting that there should be a spot in the match with Swerve and Hangman. Do you know what I'm talking about? I think so. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I... Like, I'm so dumbfounded by the amount of people that want that spot to happen or are suggesting it happens uh, that I'm like, you know, are we all poisoned from the from the shock era of wrestling? Have we all just our brains gotten poisoned when it comes to storytelling with shock TV? What was it? It was shock TV. Crash TV. That we want to go back to this kind of stuff. I, I just, I couldn't believe it. And I wrote, I, I, for, for, I'm like, that's a really dumb suggestion. That's a really dumb idea. I don't ever see them doing that. If they, I mean, if they do, I'd be shocked. I mean, that would be devastating. But I, I just couldn't believe the amount of that. That's where people got from that promo. I didn't, I mean, I found it to be just like a great blood feud. Broke into his house. He, you know, he he showed a major vulnerability. And now Hangman is is enraged. He's gone crazy. And that's the guy that we need. That's who we need uh, on that roster. He was a top guy and he stepped back. And I think a feud like this is going to only elevate both Swerve and, and him. And they need those two to be elevated. Because when I'm looking at this card here, I get what they're doing with the TV. But a lot of filler matches with three programs that they told a story for on TV. I'm interested to see what they do. You know, Dynamite last week was a good show too. So we're, we'll touch on that a little bit when we come back from break and we're going to talk about SmackDown. But they are going into full gear. We'll have that line up also in the next segment. And a whole lot more. Guys, do me a favor. Follow me on Twitter at Andrew Zarin. When we get back from break, we're going to talk about SmackDown, full gear, and everything else that's happening in the world of professional wrestling this week. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. You know, somebody asked me just now. I'm choking as I'm saying this because it's insane. That during the break, they asked me, how many messages did you get? And I counted. I have 11 messages suggesting that insane thing. Or, or bringing it up that they could or they should or maybe. Or what do I think? 11 messages. That is 11 too many <laughs> for 2023. 11 too many to get. Uh, let's talk about this. And I missed this, this announcement. It was not in, the, in, my, in my show rundown because our amazing producer decided to give it its own thing here. A little behind the scenes. AW announces the Continental Classic Tournament. Tony Khan and Danielson announced this. Danielson with his eye covered with a, with a patch or, or bandage. Brian Danielson will be the first entrant. The tournament will begin on November 22nd 
on Dynamite. It's a 12-man round-robin tournament. 12 wrestlers will be divided into two groups. Group finals will take place December 27th at Dynamite in Orlando, and the finals will take place at World's End December 30th at the Nassau Coliseum. So this is, let's go. You're, you're hyped about this, right, MG? I like this. This is fun. This is good because you don't have to have, um, you don't have to have stories to have matches, just like the G1. And, and then there can be conflict, and now you can build programs coming out of it, just in, in all the matches um, have stakes. So, yeah, I love this. I think this is great. Listen, you got a lot of people over. Let's look at it this way, right? You got the December pay per view, right? Mm hmm. You, you have an in between here. You got to fill it up. It's the end of the year. Yep. So you want to fill up some stuff. You don't want to burn through stories. You don't want to burn. This is a great way to give yourself a nice six week cushion or whatever, you know, a one month cushion padding. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm into this. I love a tournament. I absolutely love a tournament. I love when a tournament makes sense, like the G1. Um, you know, when they did the King of the Ring for the first time, when you saw that in 93, you know, on, on, mm -hmm. on TV. As we know we've done, they've done it before. That was a big deal. I very much like the King of the Ring tournament because you also made somebody from it. That was the whole purpose until it kind of fell apart, right? Austin was made up from it. Hunter was supposed to be made from it. Brett. Obviously, Mabel. The greatest King of the Ring winner. Right? Am I wrong there? Mabel? The best one? Yeah. yeah. Billy Gunn. He was supposed to be made from it. So the point of it is, you know, you could propel somebody. You know, Danielson maybe wins this. He uses this as an opportunity to win a title, you know, challenge for a title. Um, I'm into this, dude. I love a tournament. Uh, I like the Continental Classic name. Very old school. It tickles me. Uh, we'll find out who else is going to be in this, but I'd love to see top, you know, big names in here. Sounds like sprinkle, there's going to be. And it looks like sprinkle and a also couple. Danielson. Yeah. Um, not to interrupt you, but Dan yeah, yeah. Danielson, they did announce that he is going to commit to all in. It might be, that might be it for him. That might be his last match, at least full time. I, I would commit to all in. Listen, I, mm. I, I want to see him win that title. Okay. I'm very biased with Danielson. Okay. I, I have discovered that I went down a Danielson rabbit hole. My wife went out with her girlfriends. Kids were at grandma's. You know what I did? I sat there and I watched. I, I almost cursed right now on the air for the first time. That's how into the into it I was. I watched like all of his insane Ring of Honor matches. I just went down all of them. And just what a tremendously I, I am gonna say underappreciated talent. Yeah, he he's the best of the best, but just as far as mainstream success goes, 2014 should not have defined that guy. Everything he did was just you watch and you're like, my God, how can someone be so good at hit their craft to this level, right? That early on, I'm talking 2004, he was that good. Love watching him wrestle. So I am biased. I want to see him with the title. I hope he does something good. He is committed to all in, uh, you know, God willing, no injuries, nothing, you know, hopefully he'll do, he'll do great there. Let's go into, uh, actually, since we're talking about this, we'll go into full gear and SmackDown. I, I'll, I'm on the AEW topic now, so let's continue with this. Hangman Page, this is the card for next Saturday. We're going to have a preview. Oh, no, we're not going to have a preview. I'm so sorry. We're going to have, we're going to have, guess what? One of the only times this happens. It'll happen next month, too. After, because I'm going to be at World's End. I love that. I can actually talk about the show and not give you a preview. So this is the preview, okay? Deal with it. This is your preview. Hangman Page, Swerve Strickland in a Texas death match. TBS champion Chris Statlander defends against Julia Hart. And Wednesday's winner of Sky Blue versus Red Velvet. Vel Red Velvet. Red Velvet. I turned to Dusty there. Red Velvet in a three-way. AW Tag Team Champions Ricky Starks and Big Bill defend against FTR. House of Black and LFI. Man, that's going to be an insane match. Oh, my God. That, you know, and I miss those. Ma I miss oh. those AEW tag matches. You know, the multi-tag matches. I, this is going to be a classic match. I, I could already see it. AW International Champion Orange Cassidy defends against John Moxley. 
AW Women's Champion Sheeta defends against the timeless Tony Storm. Let's see if Mar uh, if there's a, uh, a, a Mariah May. Yeah, mm -hmm. Mariah. May. I was gonna say, I don't, you know, Will Washington would have would have gotten a kick. I almost said, I wonder if Mariah Carey is gonna make it. <laughs> Make a run in here. Mariah May will do something here. Uh, I'm curious to see what she does because she's a fantastic talent. And AEW World Champion MJF defends against Jay White. Are we going to see the, the the devil? Are we going to get the devil reveal? Who here? is the devil? Who is That's the devil? That's a big question, right? Who would you say is the devil? You know, I, I, you and I uh, disagree on this. I still think the chance is Britt Baker. Um, I don't yeah. think so. It's like I know, you're gonna yeah, tell me. You're gonna you, tell me. Britt Baker. Britt Baker threw. Who is it? Was it Caster? Yeah, Max Caster threw the glass. That, I think it's. It, that I think her, it's Jungle Boy. That, that was one of the goons. It could be Jungle Boy. It could be Jungle Boy. Uh. Is he from the jungle or is he from Hades now? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> from Hades, Jungle Jack Perry. <laughs> Hades boy, Jack Perry. Fascinating. I, I don't know. Uh, you listen, you know who would make the most sense? Like, there's only one, like, really, like, if there was one person to make, it makes sense. It, it's, uh, yeah. it's punk, but it's not, you know? Like, obviously, yeah, we know it's yeah. not. If it is, holy moly. A swerve of all time. The Best swerve. Ever, the, I don't think <laughs> so, it, I don't think You know what? It would be it. such a swerve. Russo would be spinning in circles. He would be blown away by that swerve. Uh, I don't. I, again, I'm not suggesting it's punk, but I think there are a couple of people that you know. Obviously, Adam Adam Cole makes a lot of sense. That Cole turned on him, and that we're going to lead to that. Uh, it makes sense that it could be Jungle Boy. You know, if you want to bring him back in a bigger picture positioning, you know, he is one of the pillars. But other than that, I don't know who else. I hope it's someone good because Max has been on a great run right now. He's had a tremendous year as world champion. He actually, he really has. It doesn't feel like he's had it for a year. Do you I remember when, we, when he won he the title? More, but yeah, Listen, yeah. he's been wrestling the most that he's ever wrestled. You know, I think this is the most that we've seen him. Mm -hmm. It's working. Like, I'm not sick of him on TV. I'm not really no, missing really him good. to defend the title. He's it's really it's working. There's TV. a balance here. I like it. All right, let's talk about this. Let's talk about SmackDown. Very quickly. What did you think? SmackDown was great. I, I enjoyed SmackDown here. Uh, it's Kevin the most Owens. Entertaining SmackDowns in a while. Very entertaining yeah. SmackDown. Mm -hmm. Kevin Owens was on commentary with the stipulation that he couldn't get physical. If he did, he would be suspended by Nick Aldis. I want to see Nick Aldis have a match. I have a feeling it's happening soon. Okay? Just leave that there. LFO, LFO. <laughs> LFO. That was a band. Wasn't LFO a boy band from the from the from the nineties? <laughs> yeah, yeah, funky ones. Yeah, uh, the LWO very different. The Latino World Order is very different than LFO. Uh, the LWO opened the show. Carlito blamed San Santos Escobar for Ray losing the title at Crown Jewel. Bobby Lashley defeated Carlito in nine minutes after the match. Escobar would attack Ray and start his heel turn. Who posted? Was it was it Rhea that posted that maybe you're the problem to Ray? Yeah. Everybody turns on him. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's a story they're telling. That's a story they're telling. <laughs> and you know what? Good on Ray. He's trying to get this guy over. Santos is, is fantastic. He's such a good wrestler. Damage control explained to Bailey why Kyrie was brought in. Uh they would they would be challenged by Charlotte, Bianca, and Asuka. All right. I want to see what they do with Kyrie. Another great talent. Dragon well, we Lee got defeated a, we got a Cedric. Good indicator at the end. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Dragon Lee defeated Cedric. You know, five and a half minutes. What was the TV time? 5.49 on TV? Yeah. With a commercial break, obviously. Um, all right. Fine match. I'd like to see Cedric. Cedric is one of those guys. Cedric was such a great independent wrestling talent, and then he went there. And I think the problem was he didn't stay in NXT long enough. I think if he had stayed there, he would have carved out such a big piece for him. Instead, he went to the main roster, and then he got lost in that disaster. LA Knight Grayson Waller's segment. 
LA Knight uh, made a comment that Grayson Waller could not be within what twenty yards of a of a school. Right. <laughs> he's so good. He's so good. He's, so good. he's such a great. Yeah. He's such a great ridiculous throwback act, and I absolutely love it. He's so over. LA Knight defeated Grayson Waller eleven twenty two. Uh, KO ended up attacking Waller and Austin Theory, and he got suspended. <laughs> You've seen that coming at the top of the show. When of they course. That. Yeah, of course. <laughs> now, now, if you do that, you got to be suspended. I promise I won't do it. And then bonk hits you over wink, the head. Wink. <laughs> hits yeah. you over the head. Uh, we also got uh, Damage Control, Bailey, EO, uh, and Kyrie wrestled against uh charlotte asuka and bianca to no contest asuka refused to tag in and ended up uh, ended up uh misting bianca and she joins up with damage control shotzi tried the to make the save the but the heels got the upper hand presumably setting up war games i love this this is great this is i great love stuff. this this is great stuff bailey mm -hmm. eo Kyrie. And and the, and Oscar. Yeah, but I think the end game is Bailey's going to end up getting kicked out of this group, right? It's the tension. I think is that's that, yeah. where they're going. Uh, they've she been, was so yeah. surprised. They're, she her facials are so good on this. She was so looked so yeah. surprised when they're like, "You want me to join you guys too?" At the end, when they all hug. So no, yeah, no, so good, loving so it. good. No, I love what they've done with Bailey. You know, I I got to meet them. And it was such a special day for my kids because we got that WWE VIP experience. Um, what, listen, what sweethearts, all of them, amazing people. They made my kids feel like they were a billion bucks. And, and that, that's what matters here. You know, at the end of the day, you watch them on TV, but unbelievable human beings, all of them. When we come back, we got a couple more things to touch on. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Final few minutes of the show, but I want to touch on this. The Wrestle Kingdom card so far is shaping up to be a really good one. IWGP World Heavyweight Champion Sonata defends against G1 winner Naito. Brian Danielson, Okada. IWGP United States and United Kingdom Heavyweight Champion Will Ospreay defends against John Moxley and David Finley in a three-way. People were upset that Finley's in this. I'm fine with that. I want to see what they do. They got to elevate him. IWGP Junior Heavyweight Champion. Takahashi defends against El Desperado. You have Bullet Club War Dogs for the IWGP uh, Junior Heavyweight Tag Team Championship against United Empire. Catch 2-2. Uh, catch two -two. IWGP Never Openweight Champion Takagi defends against uh, Tamatanga. This match was made last uh, Friday, I believe, right? At the, uh, yeah, it was made in Dallas. Uh, Lone Star yeah. Shootout, yep. Friday night. And uh, Shingo defends against uh, Trent Beretta. Uh, that was the main for that for that show, right? Yep. Okay. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Shingo, Shingo was in the main against Trent on that show. Yes. Listen, yes, man, I, I think this is going to be fun. I think Danielson being added to the mix is, is going to be a big moment for them. Um, I'm interested. This, this heavyweight title picture for them has been a little wonky this year. I don't. I, I there's a couple things here that that I was have not been crazy about, but we'll see. Maybe this is Naito's year, and then you go based on that. The New Japan AEW relationship obviously is very deep. You could tell by this card. I'm loving it. Very interesting. Monday Night Raw also will see uh, undisputed tag team champions Finn Balor and Damian Priest defend against Cody and Jay Uso, and a whole lot more. Guys, we're out of time. We'll be back next week. Wrestling Observer Live. See you next time.